What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna to try to help you guys out with something that really seems to stump a lot of people. And rightfully so, this is arguably the most difficult part of dealing with rigid tubing. And that is how to measure and make complicated bends. Now your simple straight tubing runs, and even the ones with a single 90 degree bend, are typically easy for most people to grasp. But when it comes to the runs that require multiple bends, especially when they change directions and run perpendicular, those can be quite difficult. Now I happen to be working on a build, so I figured I'd take the opportunity to show you guys the techniques that I use and how I create those complicated tubing runs. Now as always guys, keep in mind, I'm just sharing with you my technique. Uh, this is not necessarily the best way to do it. It's certainly not the only way. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the camera and we're gonna start bending some tubing. The tubing run that we're gonna talk about is this one here because I have to come over you know, per parallel with the tubing run that's already here, then come up and then go into the block. So I've got two bends and one run, and they're going to run at different planes. So it's going to be a little bit of a tricky build, uh, bend, but I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to work this out. Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken a couple pieces of scrap tubing and I've pushed them into the two fittings here. Um, I made sure they were long enough that they could kind of crisscross over one another. And the reason I did that is to help visualize um, the point at which these, these tubes need to intersect and to give me something to measure off of. Now, some people insist on freehand bending and eyeballing, um, which, you know, I guess if you're good enough, you can come pretty close to making this work. But realistically, guys, if you, were, if you look at those guys' builds um, and really scrutinize the tubing runs and the bends you'll see that's you know they're they're okay but they're really not perfect so if you're looking to um, get more of a perfect bend you're really going to have to measure your distances to make sure they come out right now this run here and this run here it's really not going to be as crucial because technically as long as the tubing is you know if it's longer you just cut it to size it's not really that big a deal but the distance between this bend and this bend, if you get it wrong, you most likely won't be able to redo it. You'll have to scrap the whole piece of tubing and then you'll have to start over again, which I'll be honest with you, even using this method and measuring, you're not necessarily going to get it right on the first try. It may take a second or even a third try to get this right, but I can promise you by measuring this, you are going to get a lot more accurate results. So I'm not going to lie guys, this does get a little tricky and I'm not going to be able to pick this up exactly how I'd like to on camera. Uh, you will have to have somewhat of a good eye when you're doing this, but what you're going to want to do is take a small ruler similar to this. This thing comes in handy a lot when you're doing uh, these sort of builds, but you want to measure the distance between the top of this tube here and the bottom of this tube here. Or what I could do in this case is if I already know my distance between the top of the mid plate and the bottom of this tube, I could simply measure from the top of this tube down to the mid plate and then subtract that from there. But ultimately I'm ending up with the same thing, which is the distance between the uh, bottom of this tube and the top of this tube so I know where to make my bends. Okay, so I got my crucial measurement between these two tubes. It was 87 millimeters. And then I just kind of roughly measured um, about 50 millimeters this way and about 80 millimeters this way. So in total, I'm going to have a piece of tubing that's roughly 220 millimeters um, to, that I need to work with. Uh, these two measurements, you don't have to get exact to start with. This is the only one you really need to know because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece of tubing. The first bend I'm going to make is the 90 that comes like this. And the reason I'm doing that one first is because since my tubing is going to be longer than it needs to be, that way that tube can run straight up into the case. I've got some room to work with. Um, and then what I will do is, is I will get it pretty close and then I will cut it to length when I'm able to install and eyeball it. And then I will have already made the first bend that I need to work with. Okay, so the first bend is done and as anticipated, uh, it doesn't line up, but that's okay. Because all I need to do now 
is eyeball the edge of this tube over to the edge of that fitting there. Get that distance, cut that much off of this tube, and then I should have a run that comes over and then up perfectly even with that fitting there. So I ended up needing to cut 21 millimeters off the end of this tube, but now I have a vertical tube that lines up with the fitting here. So the next step is the most difficult one, which is making our bend in this area here that creates the 87 millimeters of distance between the bottom and the top. And then of course a perpendicular run that goes into the CPU block here. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the jig that I built for making my bends. Um, if you guys do a lot of builds, it might be worth investing in doing something like this for yourself. It's not very expensive at all. All it is is a piece of like half inch thick uh, MDF that I screwed um, just like some trim pieces onto. Um, and I have it set up for doing 90 degree bends and 45 degree bends. And then I also have some scrap pieces of wood and clamps that I use that I can set up when necessary. But it allows me to make some marks um, for doing certain measurements and then have something to bend up against to get those really nice tight bends that I get. Uh, I do not bend freehand like a lot of guys do. Um, but I guess that's just because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. So I like consistent and tight 90 degree bends and sometimes 45 degree bends. But I'm going to go ahead and get this set up for the um, bend that I need to make here and show you guys how I'm going to do that. Okay, so I have my jig set up for this bend. Um, I took this piece of wood here and I turned it vertically because that's the section where I'm going to need what I've already bent to be pointing up vertically and I need something to align it with. And then I set the distance between these two boards, the 87 millimeters that I measured previously. You know, I just kind of clamped them down to hold them into place. Then essentially what I'm going for here is to, this piece is going to sit in like this. And when I heat up right around where my fingers are, I'm going to be able to bend going in that direction. So obviously, as you can see, I will have bends going in perpendicular directions, but this way I have some way to line them up and then also guarantee that I have that distance from the bottom of the one tube to the top of the other. All right, so I made my bend and as you can see it fits nicely in between these two boards, so I can feel confident that my distance here is either exactly 87 millimeters or pretty darn close. So uh, the only thing here examining this, this is not a perfect bend. I got a little bit of a twist to it. Um, it only shows up from what angle. So um, I'm still going to put this in and see whether or not that is going to show. It's probably going to bother me. So I may redo this. I'm not sure. Um, but regardless, you can see for the most part, um, we've got a pretty good result here. All right, so we've got it installed. Now, I already knew this was gonna be a little long, but so far it looks like it's lining up just right. So what I'm gonna need to do is cut off enough of the length here so that I can get the tube to go straight into um, the fitting there. Now, you know, it's gonna be a little bit of a guessing game. I could put um, a scrap piece of tubing in here and try to figure out my exact length, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and take off a little bit at a time until I get to um, the point where it's going to push in evenly. Uh, obviously be careful not to go too far, but I won't really know if this is lining up properly until I can get this to push in to there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I got my proper length cut here so that I could get everything fit together. And this is an example of where I did not get it right on the first try. Everything lines up great and it fits really well, but this run here is not parallel. I was probably off by one or two millimeters. I mean, it's darn close and it's probably going to be tough to pick up on camera but I either did not measure this right or it just simply didn't come out to the length that I measured. So I'm going to go ahead and try it again, um, you know, for my own personal satisfaction. But this is still good enough to show you guys how I sort of achieved 
my goal here. I came darn close. I was just barely off by a few millimeters. I'm just going to repeat all the same steps, do it over again, and hopefully on the second try, I'll get it um, to be perfect like the way I want it. A lot of people would probably be satisfied with this because it's it's pretty darn close. But um, I uh, stuff like this bothers me. So um, if you're a perfectionist, you know where I'm coming from. Uh, but other than that, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of how you're going to be able to achieve um, this sort of thing. Now, something to note I didn't mention before, whenever you're measuring um, for your lengths of tubing, you're typically going to be measuring from the ends of your fitting. It is kind of important to know how far in your tubing pushes into the fitting. I know on these bits power fittings, I always have to account for an extra five millimeters if I'm measuring from the uh, tip of the fitting. So uh, just something to note there. So there you have it. I hope that some of you found this helpful, and I especially hope that it made bending rigid tubing seem a little less intimidating. As always, if you have any further questions, feel free to drop them in the comments section below. If you want to see more how-to videos like this, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next video.